So I, I was asked to write a song based on some of the experiences, and the song was about trafficking. Uh, and I thought that's a strange thing to write a song about, trafficking. And so I thought, I, I don't know. And the, the person was pretty insistent. There's an event at the UN. They're going to have all this stuff going on. And, and they had known that I was working with an artist named Akon. Who knows who Akon is? I didn't know who Akon was. So <laughs> I, but when I met him, we worked together, and we found that we had this some commonality, which was a surprise to both of us. Uh, here, I'll show you a picture of him, actually. He's the guy with the earring, okay? <laughs> so I thought, well, you know, if we can bring attention to this, uh, I'll give it a shot. And I wrote a song, and the reason I point out that Akon's on it is we're going to play it, and you'll hear his voice in the track. He doesn't seem to want to tour with me everywhere, so, you know, I, I have him in the track. Um, but I wrote this song for two reasons. Uh, and one is because I believe that we actually don't pay the real price for anything. There's an environmental cost, a social cost, a very human cost to everything we buy. Again, we think it's convenience, we think it's you know, capitalism or democracy. No, it's killing people. Here. I know that right now, that there are communities being destroyed and women being raped to control the mineral in this phone. And I didn't pay for it. None of us did. There are so many things like this on this planet that are destroying lives and the ecosystem, and we can't do this anymore. We have to change this. It might be a little uncomfortable. It may not be so convenient. We may not get strawberries in December. You know, there's going to be a lot of things that we may have to adjust to. But I'd rather adjust so that people can live and have full lives than say, oh, well, you know, too bad. It's the system we're in. We can't do that anymore. The other reason I wrote this song uh, is because Jennifer and I went to the Sonagachi district in Calcutta. And that is one of the largest red light districts in Southeast Asia. And when you lock eyes with a young girl on the streets of the Sonagachi district, you are not the same. We talked to a young girl who was rescued from that area. She was about 15. She was sold when she was 10 for about a dollar to probably a 60 or 70 year old man. She was pulled out and she was sitting with us and she had written some poetry. She was telling us what she was dreaming of, what her possibilities were. She had light in her eyes. She was hopeful. She was excited. It was unbelievable. It was a level of, of resiliency that none of us can imagine. Uh, so when she finished, uh, what you're compelled to do is say, what can I do? What can I do? And uh, her answer was, tell my story. So that's what I do. <laughs> Fade away. If I live to 
appreciate that. I know it's a little strange maybe to applaud after that. I appreciate that because it's um, a world we all have to see, illuminate, recognize, and end, dismantle, destroy. This is not a world we want anybody to live in. And we can do it. We can make that difference, but it's going to take some work.